last week, uh, the boy C Day man, he came out and he made some tweets um, that kind of went with his interview that he did last year, uh, the 22 shots interview, where he's accusing uh, Rondo number nine of trying to put the murder, you know, that they do in town, folk. I guess Rondo been trying to put the murder on him uh, during the appeal process. And, um, you know, he came out and made a tweet and said, hey, man, if anybody want to see, you know, Rondo number nine try to implicate me in the murder, um, go check that paperwork. Um, and a lot, you know, the, the Internet kind of went up on that. Uh, you know, this is something see they've been saying really for a few years now, if people been paying attention. Um, but I think he got uh, a decision on a motion or something's coming up. And, you know, this Rondo stuff, I believe it keeps popping up uh, in his case that, you know, his co-defendant is trying to put it on him. Rondo came out and, and, and made some posts basically saying he good, he doing good, he getting money, that type of stuff. He in school. Um, and even Lil Dirt came out. Some people saying that Lil Dirt kind of made a cryptic post where he's, you know, basically supporting Rondo. Because I've seen it a couple years ago when C Day made that first comment about it. Right. And my thought then was, like, damn, man, that's, I mean, that, hmm, that is kind of slick teller. I mean, when you got your attorney up there saying something about, you know, uh, about the case that you are involved in, you know, your attorney is going to run it by you first. Right. You know, They're going to ask you what you want to do, what's your opinion, do you want to take a deal, do you want to give a statement? So your, your attorney's not going to get up there and say something that you don't know. So for C-Day to feel like that, he must have a legit reason. And, and if Rondo let his attorney get up there and say that, I mean, that that ain't cool. Right. So in your opinion, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give my opinion too, because you know what I'm saying? we I ain't just going to put you out there, but in your opinion. So do you feel like Rondo is telling on C-Day? Like, do you feel like C-Day have a real uh, gripe to pick? Or do you feel like, you know, it's, it's really some shit, just people that's mad they've been locked down. You know, honestly, it sounds more or less like, uh, you know, I I feel like C.D. got a reason to feel the way he do. But I feel like more than anything, when you got Rondo coming out saying things like, oh, my books is taken care of. You know, Yeah, that man, was crazy, right? Oh, you throwing shots at the homie. And it's yeah, like, it's, I, like, it's like he was stunting on them. Like, that's supposed to be, I thought y'all brothers. Like, that and, was kind of weird. Homie, that was a weird statement to me. Your big homie ain't even supposed to be putting y'all in that situation to even feel like y'all got to go against each other. Like, if he going to do one, you got to do the other. Because from my understanding, neither one of them had any smut on their name or don't steal. So why would you not feed the wolves? I mean, the wolves is behind bars right now. Look, you know, damn, they're doing life. And yeah. you're not taking care of both of them. That right there is what causes friction. I thought that was crazy that it seems that Rondo's response to see they being kind of upset about you know, this appeal situation, what is going on and how the lawyers are putting it on C-Day. I thought Rondo's response was weird because he's basically mm -hmm. saying, hey, Dirk still fuck with me. Mm -hmm. And why is Dirk fucking with Rondo and not fucking with C-Day? Like, I thought they was all Team 600 when, when it all went down. So it so kind of seemed like it's some favoritism going on. You know what I'm saying? No, you're right. It's selective politics and at its finest. <laughs> So in that case, it's like you kind of putting you would have thought it'd be C Day the one crying and telling and all that type yeah. of shit. Cause he the one getting the short end of the stick. Um, you know, whole time, you know, this dude Rondo, man. Like I read the paperwork. Um, and and you know, I've been in those situations too, as well, where your lawyer is like, hey man, you know, the best situation for you may hurt somebody else out there in the world and you know in that situation i had to fire my lawyer about that because he just could not get off that like he just that was the only way he wanted to go and i'm like look bro fight my case in a different way but he he couldn't get off that so i fired my lawyer it seemed like rondo's happy with his lawyer i mean honestly i feel like that would be the smart move i mean if we're gonna sit here and go by you know the street code that 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 brought us in this thing uh in, in, in the jam together in the first place, then why are we getting off of it now? I'm not gonna have my attorney up there throwing you under the bus and I call you my brother. And like, like, like we just went through some life changing events to even get in this situation. Like, and, and you was with me, so I'm gonna feel like I owe you the world, especially if you ain't say nothing. Fact, so we supposed I, to go down together. Like, shit, we did it together, we supposed to go down together. Thanks. 
And I just don't see that nowadays. Nowadays, it's, it's uh, what they call that. Uh, uh, it's, it's not all for one anymore. It's one for all. Man, pretty much. crazy. So, you know, what's funny. So I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? If, if Rondo's letting his attorney use this type of language, because it's, it's, it's mostly written stuff, I believe. It's mostly like written motions and stuff. If yeah. Rondo is okay with his attorney using that type of language or using those type of words and emotions, then yeah, bro, that's, you know, that's you, you telling, bro, you implicating, you know what I'm saying? You cooperating with uh, uh, the government or whatever going on, man. And that's not cool. Now I want to, I want to bring it up. I think it's the perfect time, bro. Cause we've been talking a lot about just different scenarios and shit. You know what I'm saying? Cause everybody want to know like, man, who is this dude telling? Is that dude telling? Is, is this dude, you know what I'm saying? All that type of shit. Hey, all right. So everybody kind of doing that. You know what I'm saying? So just to preface, when the whole Bezu shit came out, when the Bezu paperwork came out, um, and to be honest, man, a lot of people are, are telling me behind the scenes that there could possibly be some paperwork with Dirk doing the same situation where your homie die, y'all fighting the case together. So it's only right that, look, man, since he did, we're going to put it on him. Nobody goes to jail and everybody else get to walk free, man. Um, you know, people have brought this scenario up. This is like a big topic yeah. right now in the streets. No, right, it's right, a big right. topic in the streets right now. It's a lot of street dudes talking about it. It's a lot of rappers talking about it. If you do, if you catch a case with your homie, y'all ain't never did no fool shit, no fool shit. During the bond process, let's say y'all bond out, y'all bond out, y'all out in the open, y'all fighting the case uh, from the crib. Your right. no homie die, and then the prosecution come to you and say, "Look, man, we we think he was the one." What like what do you do in that situation? Do do you do you fight it without putting it on him? You know what I'm saying? Like what what do you what would you do in that situation? My honest opinion is kind of like what I was telling you, you know, these past few days we could talk about this scenario in particular. My whole thing is if, if this is your homie and you and your homie and you know each other like that, because to me, it's a difference between a brotherhood and somebody you call your homie. If if I look at you like my brother, I know your every move from the moment you hop up out of bed to the time you go to bed. And that and that's no homo. That's just we brothers like that. So I know how we operate. So right. if we get in a jam like that. And I know your character and I know what you would want me to do. And that's something I, that, that we ain't even had to talk about because I know how you are. Then, of course, yeah, because I know you would want me to do that. But if it's not. So that the, <laughs> so you saying, of, of course, you will put it on buddy ass because, you know, that's the play. Well, yes. If it is the play, if it is something that we have discussed or ain't even got to discuss because I know how we are with each other. You know what I'm saying? Then, yeah. I'm okay with you putting it on me and, and I know you're going to be okay with me putting it on you. But right. if that's not the conversation and I know you as a person, you wouldn't be okay with that, then I'm not going that route. But that's got to be something that's discussed damn near or you know your brother that well to know he would want you to put it on him to get out that gym. So so let's say y'all didn't discuss it. We ain't never had this talk. Matter of fact, let's 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 make let's take it a step further because I'm like I said, bro. I'm gonna give my opinion at the end as well. I, don't, I ain't just I already, putting you out there. I already know what you're gonna say. Let's say this nigga say, "Don't never tell on me about nothing. I don't care if I'm dead." And then he died while y'all right. fighting the case. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But so what you I would do you would do the sixty piece. Now you got your homie family dead. I mean, you got your homie dead, his family suffering. You in jail for 60 years, your family suffering. Because your homie who way. dead told you don't never tell him. If we brothers like that, I know your mama. And if I know your mama like that and she love me, I know she going to come to me and tell me, I love you like a son. I can't lose two sons. Now, nah, if mama nah, come to tell me something like that, then I, I'm going to have to go with what mama want because mama know her son too. For real. So, my, so, so I'm going to jump in. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to help you out, bro. I'm going to jump in. Because I know it's a tight ass. And that's the crazy shit about the streets, bro. And that's why young niggas really shouldn't get involved in the streets. And this is why snitching and who telling and who did what. That's why this shit is such a fucking point right now. 
because you got so many young niggas trying to dip their foot in the streets and they literally don't know the rules. They don't know in the streets there are no rules. Right. You see what I'm saying? So the first rule of the streets, there are no rules. Snitching yeah. is about yourself as a man, to be honest. Because we talked about it, bro. It's yeah. dudes in the mafia. Yeah. It's all type of dudes that's told. And they were still gangster. You see what I'm saying? Snitching yeah. is about your manhood. Are you man enough to stand yeah. on your principles and, and be accountable for your actions? Now, I'm going to save you on this one. If my homie tell me, bro, don't never tell on me for shit, and then that nigga die, I'm putting it on him because he gone. <laughs> I'm getting free, and I'm going to look out for my family just like I would, bro. I'm going to look out for his family. I'm looking for my family. 